Well, hello everyone. Welcome back for more. I would camp that. I'm just making a quick little stop at a roadside rest area. I've got the laptop out here. In uh, one of my previous videos, I tried to do some uh, video footage transfer over to the laptop. And unfortunately the <laughs> laptop had not been in sleep mode and was very dead. So the priority right now is I want to do the dash cam. I've been taking so much dash cam footage and I'm probably underestimating how much this little 128 gigabyte card can hold. But it's crazy how small these things are now. But I just like to transfer the footage over because the dash cam will start recording over old stuff without warning. So we got our little verbatim card reader here with the micro SD card in it. And I've also got to get my portable hard drive as well. My passenger seat is an absolute mess right now. Little glimpse into how the life actually is. When Rita's not with me, it basically just becomes glorified storage. Well, I've got a passenger. The laptop's sitting and doing its thing. The backpack is kind of acting as a buffer in case I got to hit the brakes. We look like a very shoestring budget FBI surveillance van. FBI surveillance truck. Also ignoring the fact that we're in Canada and we don't have the FBI up here, but you know, semantics. Okay, well that does its thing. We're gonna get back to doing some exploring. Uh, I did see another blink and you miss kind of turn off further back on the road. So I'm gonna head back that way. BC has a tendency with some of these uh, little turnoffs that you have to like turn onto them very quickly because if you slow down to turn to them, you, you could end up getting rear-ended. But we'll, uh, we'll head back that way and uh, see if we can get in there. Okay, this could be something, this could be nothing. But we're gonna find out either way. There we go. This is our kind of road. And even after the uh, big rainstorm we had last night, the maybe it didn't hit out here this far, but uh, nice and dry out here. Oh, cool. It's like we're going up to some uh, power line towers up there. I just saw a shoe sitting on the road. Bunch of scrap wood pallets. Better watch out for anything that might have nails. Oh. <laughs> this is cool. Very overgrown. Oh, there's a, looks like a fence up there. Oh, I see, okay. So it takes us up to like an electrical relay station. Just up the hill here. Oh. Very cool. What a beauty of a spot. Super peaceful up here. There's some more fence out that way. I really don't want to go off the visible trail. If people have been using this as a dumping ground for wood and other things, I don't want to risk popping one of my tires. Just so peaceful. These are my kind of roads. And you know, stuff like this, like we have a lot of outposts like this in Alberta for like oil and gas. 
They have uh, no trespassing signs, but I mean, I, I would say that's for everything within the fence, not outside the fence. So, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna put this one on the map. I would, I'd do an overnight here. Oh, I hear sirens. I hope they're not here for us. I'm just a lowly little truck camper. I didn't do it. I'm sorry. Just been sitting up here for a little bit, just enjoying it out here. So beautiful, so peaceful. And the laptop has finished transferring all that footage from the dash cam card. So I'm gonna put the laptop away and we'll get the dash cam back in operation. Yeah, I think I missed him. But he was just creeping over by the trees there. Oh, I can still see him moving. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can just see him moving in the bushes over there. He's probably watching me. Who is this weird, obnoxious dude in a big, obnoxious white truck? Yeah, I think that uh, black bear took off. He uh, stopped and looked at us for a little bit. It looked like, from what I could see, he looked pretty young. You know, probably a juvenile. Curious. Stupid. Full of wonder. I can relate. Now, this is another beautiful area here. It's uh, a back road in a very... I, I went off on a side road off of the main highway we were on. So there's a lot of like isolated rural properties out here, but then there's just this area. It's just kind of looks like another dumping area for wood piles and such. Um, but just another, yeah, just another isolated, overgrown nature at its finest area. Absolutely full of bugs. Areas like this, when they're near like those isolated rural areas, I'm a little hesitant. I'll still throw it on the map, but I'm... Yeah, I'd be hesitant to make this a first choice for a camp just because, not to stereotype, but sometimes with some of those rural areas, you get some people that kind of think they own everything that the light touches. And you don't want to get into an argument with someone like that because no matter how you try to explain it to them or law, trespass law, land, lease, whatever, they're not going to listen. They're not going to give you the time of day. So the road goes further down there. We can see a wood dump pile down there. Nice view of the lake nearby. Yeah, just beautiful area all around. And then that's the road we came from. So if I had to make a go of it here, I'd probably, just cause you got a nice little wide pull out here, I'd probably make a go of it here. And no sign of our little bear friend out that way.
Okay, we got a little road down here. Going into the bush. What does that say? Provincial Park Boundary, BC Parks. Well, for being a wooded trail, this is actually pretty well maintained. Oh, wow, look at this. Wow, beautiful. Look at that. So there's a river over that way. And there's a fire pit that someone made. And I haven't gotten out of the truck yet, but I do see something over in the trees hanging, like a tarp or something, or maybe a tent. So there might be somebody, there might be somebody out here or somebody was out here. Let's go a little further down the road and explore some more. I wonder how far this road will take us. Oh, does the road split up here? It does. So we can go right or we can go left. Hmm. Let's go left. That seems like the right way. Oh, starting to get pretty overgrown down this way. <laughs> Turning around to go back the way we came might be interesting. We'll see if this opens up. Oh, okay. So the road just abruptly ends in a little bit of a clearing. Yeah, so the path to the left took us here, just a better look at it. Just a dead end there, opens up a little bit, lots of Lots of dead wood. And then if we go back this way, we can take the uh, path to the right. So got the truck turned around. That was a little interesting doing it in such a tight space, but we managed. And the heat's picked right back up. It's a scorcher again. You wouldn't even think that it had rained last night, though I'm not even sure if the rain made it out to these parts. But let's get back in the truck and we're going to head back down the other road. I'm curious to see what else lies down this road. Okay, back the way we came. We're gonna take the right path this time. Oh, my poor truck gets beat up by all the branches. Okay. So I wonder if this path will take us back to the road. Yeah, it's looking like that's the case. Oof. Yep. Took us right back to the road, so it just loops right back around. And that's where we started that little journey, right over there. Had a nice little break inside the rig, got all the footage backed up, so that eases some of my content creator anxiety. Everybody's cleared out of the rest stop and the weather can't make up its mind what it's doing. Went from being hot, literally no wind. Now the wind has picked up aggressively and there's rain on and off. So we might be looking at another storm coming in. So for dinner, 
I think I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible, but I think we're going to make our dinner inside the rig. We'll just have to be careful, move a few things around, but just so we're not doing it in the rain and getting soaked. So I'll just get some stuff to the back and we will pick up back there. I love this little guy. He has saved my butt so many times. Not gonna lie, as much as the rain forcing me inside the rig to cook is a plan changer, I'm super grateful that it's cooled down because it was so hot earlier. Yesterday was even worse, so some wind, some rain to cool things down, kinda nice. Mmm, that smells so good. You know, four years into the truck camping life, I still have my moments where it just blows my mind doing something like this in the back of a truck like in a box in a canopy it's just so cool you know all the all the things you can do you're really only limited by your imagination so it's so much fun and it's really cool when you run into things like bad weather or changed plans or you're just not feeling up to whatever you had originally had planned it's really cool to be able to just go to plan b or plan c all the way to plan g and be like oh well We'll do this instead. Okay, we're just gonna turn this guy off for now. I forgot to grab the plate, so I'm trying to, not so much a cutting of the steak, but a tearing of the steak, so I'm not scuffing up the frying pan. Although this frying pan's pretty old and has already got some battle scars as it, as it does, but. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh. Gonna be sitting here, might as well get comfortable. That cool air feels so nice. Hopefully that'll translate to a uh, Nice, cool sleep. Little wind wouldn't uh, wouldn't be too bad either. So we're gonna have a little laugh at my expense. So one of my favorite snacks to bring in the fridge are those you know those little baby bell cheeses where they're like a little mini cheese circle and they're in the red wax cover. Well, some of that got on top of the tote when I was cooking, and I put down the hot frying pan, and yeah, it melted and. Some of it melted to the bottom of said frying pan, so that's going to need a, a good scrub to get that off. So add that to the list of uh, dumb things to avoid doing when you're cooking in your rig. Whoa! Took that turn a little sharp, but we made it. Cool. Yeah, I've been, out of all the places we've gone to, I've been kind of thinking about coming back to this one. So, here we are. Back up here. Make sure we're pointed in the direction that we wish to leave in the morning. Just in time to catch the sun setting in the distance. Yeah, if we don't get kicked out of here, I think this is gonna be a beauty of a sleep tonight. I'm gonna jump in the back though. It's been a fun, fun trip so far. Sad it's coming to an end. Wish this one was a bit longer, but yeah, looking forward to jumping in the back and taking it easy. Okay, there's our view out the passenger side window. And then we've got our view out the driver's side window. And I always like to double check. Make sure I locked both the doors and make sure that the fridge is on, which it is, because sometimes that cord does get knocked loose. And of course, good to make sure I didn't leave anything plugged into the 12 volts because that could result in a, well, a dead battery. Not as much of a concern this time of year, but if we were winter camping, that would be a very real concern. 
The last couple of nights, I've always been in a mad scramble to get my fan going, but the rain has cooled stuff down so much that honestly, just sitting here with the windows open and, you know, there's like a gentle on and off breeze. It's uh like, this is pretty nice. Like I'll probably get the fan going before I actually go to sleep, but yeah, this is, this is so nice. You know what's one awesome thing about solo camping? Rita's not here to give me heck for anything stupid I've done today. Oh, contraire, I hear all of your stupid thoughts, Dustin. Please stop. Rita? Yes, this is your conscience speaking. I don't think we've spoken recently, have we? No, no, you really need to stop putting the uh, the phone down and leaving me on ring, okay? You need to listen once in a while. Stop doing the stupid thing. It hurts us physically. Okay, hanging up now. Love yeah, you. That's what I thought. Go do the stupid thing. I'll be here. I did all the stupid... But I did all the stupid things. Now I'm just relaxing in the rig. Yes, we're disappointed. Thank you. Ouch. Wow, right in the feels. Okay, well, I'll see you in a couple of days, babe. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Well, I've been chilling back here for a while. One thing that's really cool, the further north you go, is, like, it's quarter after ten right now at night. And it just takes forever for all the light to fade from the sky. Like, I've done some camping way the heck up north, and I've seen sunsets that are, like, still kind of sort of going, like, closer to midnight, depending on how far north you go. And the only source of light that I have right now is this fan, which also doubles as a nightlight. Well, it's been a fun couple of days. I'm getting pretty tired, though. Oh, the temperature keeps dropping, so it's actually nice and cool. I'll probably still run the fan, though, because I just like having it nice and chilly back here. I will see you folks in the morning. Oh, wow. It's a really foggy morning. It's actually kind of chilly. It's so weird given how hot it was even just yesterday. Well, I'm glad we picked this area. It's not to say we'll never camp at any of the other areas we explored. Like I said, I, I wish we had a few more days out here in BC, but I got to start gunning back to Alberta. But hey, I'm excited for the next time we get to come out to British Columbia. Hopefully Rita can join us next time. Uh, still lots of places that I've never been to. You know, if I haven't seen it, it's, it's new to me. So hopefully we'll get out here again in the near future. But I got some miles I got to cover with the tires today. So I'm going to get on the road, get an early start grab a coffee when I'm in town. We'll make our way back to Alberta. As always, stay classy, my friends. Thank you for joining me on this latest adventure. Looking forward to seeing what we get up to next. Have a great day, everybody.